I really love problems which can be solved using a sliding window algorithm because I can actually take up the string, put a window on top of it and then try to slide it. It gives me an idea how the problem is going to proceed and what kind of an algorithm can I use. So based upon a similar idea, let us try to explore this problem. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will go over the problem statement and we will look at the given sample test cases. We will then quickly look at the brute force solution and why it's not feasible. We will then define a sliding window approach, see what is happening and then come up with a solution. As usual, we will also be doing a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us first make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given two strings S and P and you have to return me the array of starting indexes of all of the P's anagram that are in S. For example, I have my first test case over here. If you look at this string P, you have to tell me at what index do I start and then I will find these anagrams in my original string S. If you check closely, when I start from the 0th position, I find the string CBA. This is an anagram. And once again, if I start at this particular position, then I find the anagram BAC. So at what indexes are you finding these anagrams? You found the first anagram at an index 0 and then you found the second anagram at index 6. Notice that there are no other anagrams of this particular string in the string S. So for this particular test case, your answer will be 0, 0,6. And the problem also states that you can output this in any order. If you also output 6, 0, that is also a completely valid answer. Similarly, if you look at the second test case, you may already assume that there can be so many anagrams possible and there are so many different sequences. The only catch over here is that whenever you are looking at an index, then you are looking at all of the contiguous characters. You are not concerned that, okay, one character is at index zero and the another character is at index four. You don't have to do it. In the second test case, my string P is AB. Now, where can you find these strings? If I start at index 0, can I find it? Yes. If I start at index 1, can I find it? Yes. If I start at index 2 again, can I find it? Yes. So, at every position, I am able to find an anagram. Hence, the answer to the second test case will be 0, 1 and 2 because you were able to find an anagram at each of these positions. So, if you feel that you have now understood the problem statement even better, feel free to try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. When we talk about a solution, the brute force approach is very, very obvious. You can start off with the length of this second string and then find out all the different possible substrings from the original string and then find if they are anagrams or not. You can start from each of the character. First C, then B, then A, then E. You will go on three characters at a time and then find those anagrams. But it is very easy to understand that this is going to end up taking a lot of time. And certainly this is not what we desire. But the brute force solution actually gives us a slight hint. What were we doing over here? We start from the first character and then look at the next two characters. That is because our anagram will have three characters at max, correct? Next, what you do? You start from the second character and then again look at three characters. Then you start from the third character and then again you will look at three characters. So every time, what are you doing? You are looking at three characters at once. And this is a very good hint that this problem involves a sliding window algorithm because you're only concerned about a certain section of the string at a time. What I can do is I can map this original string in form of an array. And now I can bring a window over here. 
So what is this window showing you? This window is of the length 3. Why? Because P is also of the length 3. My anagram cannot be shorter than this. It cannot be longer than this. So if my anagram has to exist, it has to be in this window size. So what I'm doing? I am looking at the first three characters right now. If this is an anagram, then what do you do? You add this starting index to your result array, correct? So far, so good. Now, what about the next case? In a brute force solution, we were finding the string again. But over here, I have a sliding window. I slide this window over here to my next character. And what just happened? This new character got added and this character got deleted. Now I have a new window over here. Are these two strings anagram? No, that means I can move ahead. I see this window again. These two strings are not anagrams, so you can move ahead. This way you will keep on moving ahead. Once again, these are not anagrams. You will keep on moving ahead and then eventually you will land at this particular string. What happens now? These two strings are anagrams again. So what do you do? You take up this six and you will add it to your result array. This way you were able to iterate over your entire string only once and you can determine if you are finding anagrams or not. Now the catch over here is how do you actually compare if these two strings are anagrams? Because at every iteration, this check is mandatory. This is happening at every time, right? So definitely we want an efficient solution around it. You cannot go around comparing all the strings again and again. This will end up wasting a lot of time. We need to be efficient over there. If you remember, what is the property of an anagram? That all of the characters will occur the same number of times in both the strings, correct? So if I can create a frequency array, that can help me to solve some of the things. Once again, I have this string and what I will do is I start off my sliding window. I take up my string P and then I will try to create a frequency array of this particular string. This frequency array will have 26 indexes starting from zero. This is meaning zero is representing a A, then one represents a B, two represents a C, three represents a D, and then all the way up to Z. So what you can do is you can iterate over your string P once and then populate your frequency array. What will happen over here? You found A once, you found B once, and you found C once. If you had one more A over here, then what will happen? This will become two. So this frequency map is kind of storing, okay, how many characters and what is the frequency of each of the character? But how do you leverage it? Think about our sliding window. This is my current window. I create one more frequency map for my window. Currently, I have these three characters available. And notice I will have the 26 indexes again. So I see a C. That means I add a one here. Then I see a B. I add a one here. Then I see a A. And then I had a one here. My sliding window is complete. So at every iteration, what do you do? You will actually compare if both of these arrays are the same. And no matter what programming language you are using, Java, Python, these programming languages have utility functions by which you can compare if two arrays are same. If you want to do it yourself also, these are just 26 characters. So it is a order of constant time. This will not grow at scale with your input size. What will happen next? You found that, okay, these two arrays are the same. As soon as they are same, you add this zero to your result set. And now what do you do next? You slide the window one character ahead. This is where the magic happens. You don't need to create this frequency map again. Just look at the character that you found now. 
you found the character E. E will point to the index 4. So what do I do in my frequency map? I add a 1 over here. But notice that you lost a character also. So you will subtract this value from your frequency map. So what happens is C will actually become 0. Or what you can do is a minus minus. This frequency map is now giving you the current state of your window. Once again, you compare both of these arrays. If they were same, you can add this index. Otherwise, no. Currently, you don't have to add it. So now what you can do is you can move ahead. And now what happened? B got added. So this will become 2. And 1B got removed. So this will once again become 1. This way, you will keep on moving ahead. Once again, A gets added and A gets removed. So net change is nothing. You move ahead. What do you have this time? B gets added. So this becomes a 2. And then E gets removed. So this will become a 0. You get the idea, right? At every instance, this frequency map is telling me what do I have in my window. So if you will keep on sliding it, certainly you will reach one more situation where you find the string BAC. And once again, both of these arrays will be equal. You can add the 6 to your result set. And hence, once you are done iterating, you will have your answer available. And notice, this will work for every scenario. Even our second test case, when we had A, B, A, B, at every instance, you are capturing, okay, this is my current state of the frequency map. And this is the actual map of the input string P that I have. Based upon all of this, let us quickly do a dry run of the code now. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have my input strings S and P that are passed in as an input parameter to the function find anagrams. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create two frequency maps. The first map is going to store what is the count of each character in the string P. And the second map is going to store what is the count of each character in the string S. Also, we create a result list that will eventually return in the end. My setup is now ready. What do I have to do? First of all, I have to count the frequency of each of the characters in the string P. So I'm iterating over each of the characters in this particular string. And what will happen? I will have one A, one B and one C. Now this frequency map is ready and it will never change. In our next step, what do we do? We start a for loop that will actually be a sliding window. And for a sliding window, we try to take all of the characters of the length that I have for my string P. What I will do is I will populate this map at any instance. If the frequency map of P and the string S, they become same, then I will add this particular index to my result list. Otherwise, what do I do? I add whatever the new character I get, I do a plus plus and whichever character that I'm removing, I do a minus minus. This way, I will iterate over my entire string and at the very end, I can return my result list that will have the answer. Notice that we are iterating over the entire string only once. So the time complexity of this solution is order of n. And what is the space complexity? We are creating two frequency maps. But if you notice, these frequency maps will have a maximum of 26 indexes, not more than that. And that is constant space. So I can safely say that the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. I hope the problem statement and its solution are now pretty much clear to you. I believe these kind of problems are perfect for a telephonic round of interview because it does not involve a lot of critical thinking, nor it requires you to write down a whole lot piece of code. It just clicks how fast you can think and how you can look at the problem statement. And what kind of a solution can you come up with? There are also multiple solutions possible. Instead of using a frequency map, you can use a hash map. What about that? And what other solutions come to your mind? 
Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming video. Until then, see ya.